Alrighty guys, so Southwood Prospector here. We are going to Bancroft. 1,500 mineral specimens, guys, can be found in the surrounding region of Bancroft. It's a geological uh, heaven. Gonna be Halliburton Highland country. And then uh, we're gonna pass through Gilmore, the uh, mining town, the old old mine town. Cordova Mines was a gold town. Gilmore, Deloro, all places where there was a big gold rush, right? And Bancroft too actually had a bit of gold, bit of surface gold discovered there in the 1860s. But other than that, not really much in the way of gold, but lots of other minerals, uranium, lots of uranium, lots and lots of uranium. And uh, lots of kind of weird, more like ornamental minerals and gems that don't have any industrial value in, in the same sense as like uranium or coal or oil or gas. Um, this whole area guys, everything in here, like gold, copper, mica, lots and lots of mining. Bancroft, well known for uranium mining, 50s all the way up to the 80s. So this whole region, Bancroft, Madoc, Marmara, it's all part of the same geological complex here. They all got the same geology. Lots of granite, hard rock mining, uranium prospecting and uranium mining. Big, big, big in Bancroft. When there was a uranium rush in the 50s, the largest uranium rush in the world. So the uranium prospecting rush. Everybody was trying to prospect uranium for the war effort and stuff. Nuclear research and everything. Nuclear commissions heavily involved in all this stuff. So we're in one of the most minerally diverse regions you could find. Bancroft. 1,500 mineral specimens here. Like marble, like cladding and flooring and all kinds of um, aesthetic stuff. So this is the Bancroft Mineral Museum. From the Taylor Feldspar Mine, Monteagle Township, circa 1920. So this is the kind of rock, guys, they're getting here. Lots of quartz. Ooh, that's a nice looking piece. Yeah, there's some really cool rocks here. They're not profitable, but they're cool and they're ornamental mineral rocks. This is the old station here, the old train station. Go take a look, see what's going on here. Okay, so this is the minerals and the uses in Bancroft. I said Bancroft had a lot of mining, so. Feldspar, most common mineral on the Earth's surface. Feldspar had multiple uses in everyday life. Crushed to a powder, it's a major component of ceramic and porcelain items. Used for toilets, bathtubs, sinks, tiles, to dishes and figurines, even false teeth. A loose powder, it works as an abrasive in household cleaners, such as Ajax, Bon Ami, and in toothpaste. Mica, yeah, mica is very common. Another extremely common mineral, mica is found in many rock types in the region. One of the best local deposits was the Silver Crater Mine. Ah, uh, yes. Near Bancroft, immense mica crystals up to five feet long and two feet wide were mined. Whew! Okay. Mica can be peeled apart into thin, flexible layers. This made it useful for Essen glass, car, and stove windows. Chief uses are now in plastic, some rubber, especially for tires, asphalt, shingles, and paints. Garnet, common throughout the Bancroft region, garnet occurs mainly as crystallized specimens and is rarely found in commercially viable quantities. It is popular with collectors and when transparent can be cut into gemstones. Commercially, garnet was mined at the Ruby Mine near the Denbig and at Jewelville near Palmer Rapids for use as an abrasive for sandpaper and sandblasting. So that's garnet, guys. That's what garnet looks like. Apatite, a compound of calcium and phosphate. Apatite has long been recognized as a source of phosphate fertilizers. Early mines in the Bancroft region extracted apatite for this use. Oh, okay. However, developers in the early 1900s found it much easier to recover phosphate from guano, bird dropping sediments in Florida and other places. Here in the Bancroft area, there are plentiful localities to locate fine apatite crystals, mainly in calcite veins. In spring, one need only look for lines of green leaks appearing from the forest floor to know that there is likely apatite below as leeks prefer to grow in phosphate rich soil. Okay, corundum with a hardness of nine, second only to diamond, is used to grind and polish other materials. It is used in sandpaper sandblasting and as a polishing grit. Between, 19, between the mid 1890s and 1917, the Craigmont and Burgess mines supplied the bulk of the world's need for high quality grinding grit used in the production of optical lenses and machine parts. However, corundum crystals found there are now only for collectors. All commercial used material is made synthetically in a laboratory. Carborundium. That's the synthetic made. And then that's the organic. 
Nepheline, a common material in the Bancroft area, but quite rare elsewhere. Nepheline is similar to feldspar in its structure and chemistry. Therefore, like feldspar, it can be used in the ceramic industry for household cleaners and toothpastes. Nepheline was mined at the Davis, Morrison, Golden Keen, and Vardy quarries. Between 1927 and 1942, large well-formed crystals of Nepheline can be found at the Davis Hill and Princess Sodalite mine. They are very rare in the rest of the world. The Canadian talc mine in Maydock was the best source of talc in eastern Ontario. It was Canada's longest operating mine from 1896 to 1910. Oh. Talc is recognized by its very soft, one on the most scale, greasy feeling flakes, which when ground produce talcum powder. It is also used in cosmetics, paints, ceramic glazes as filler in plastics and rubber, and as a carving material. Fluorite and barite. No commercial production took place outside of Maydock. Around Moira Lake, over 30 deposits were worked for fluorite and some barite. Wonderfully large fluorite crystals were found, mainly in shades of green associated with barite. Fluorite is used as a flux in steel making for production of hydrofluoric acid to etch glass and for making fluoride for use in toothpaste and for water treatment. Fluoride is soft, four on the most scale, heavy as perfect cleavage in four directions and belongs to the cubic crystal system. Barite is extremely heavy and is therefore used for drilling mud. Oh, okay. Along with its weight, it's also radio-opaque and is therefore used in x-rays. Barium swallows. So that's graphite. That's what actual just straight up graphite looks like. Pencils and stuff, machinery lubrication. That's marble. Faraday mine. Oh, this is the mining. The red areas denote uranium ore zones at the Faraday mine. Before the advent of computers and software, which could produce three-dimensional forms, mine geologists created visual reconstructions of underground geology in ore zones by plotting data on cross-sections of the mine area. By placing the information on clear plastic sheets and stacking the sheets together, they produced a 3D model of the ore zones. Oh, okay. Horizontal scale, one inch equal 100 feet. The Faraday mine. They're called the Madawaska mine now, but it was called the Faraday. But you can see, so these are layered plates. 15,000 E, 14,500. There's the core samples for the ore. This looks like a general mining work area. You see all the little mining equipment and stuff. Drill steel, different types, right? That bit, they usually put a cap on it for drill, like a drilling cap here. And then these ones, these are good bits. Ore cart, right? Ore. And then just airlines, drills, jack leg. He's drifting to buddy here. Ore body, ore deposit. Oh, this is fluorescent minerals. So we got short wave, mid wave, and long wave. You can see all these minerals, guys. The atoms get excited and they turn light up. Look at that, she's fully lit up. Real cool though, some real cool colors here. Fluorescence is real cool. Valdor, all over the place. Illinois, California, England. Canadian minerals, calcite, celestine, sphalerite. Oh, it's a nice piece of pyrite. Dolomite and calcite. Oh, hematite, titanite, calcite. Almondine. Ooh, gypsum, selenite, ooh. Barite, apatite, quartz and calcite. Quartz, amethyst, amethyst is cool. Yeah, this is all ore samples from the Faraday mine. So in production from April 1957 to June 1964, the mine not only provided employment in the area, but it produced a large number and variety of minimal specimens. Best known are the uranophanes, green fluorides, hematite, coated calcites, often calcopyrite and pyrite incursions. Reactivated in 1975 under the name of Madawaska Mines, where production resumed in August of 1976 and ceased in June of 1982. During that period, a large quantity of spectacular twinned calcite crystals were found, along with giant gypsum and quartz crystals. So what do we got here? Limonite, calcite, gypsum, hematite on quartz. Ooh, that is nice. Calcite with calcopyrite, selenite. Some of these I can't pronounce. Calcite with calcopyrite inclusions, Faraday mine. Magnetite, calcite, eliminate, gypsum. This is all from the Faraday mine too. This all came out of the Faraday mine. Fluorite, fluorite, fluorite. Eliminate. Calcite. Pyrite quartz. That's a gorgeous one. Calcite with hematite coating and calcopyrite. Uranophane. Calcite. Molybdenite. 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 Fluorite. Calcite. Serpentine. Quartz. 
calcite, hematite, gypsum. So much calcite though. Hematite, gypsum, quartz, quartz with celestine, glacier, boulder, geode, that's really cool. Eliminate, calcite, anhydrite. And then these are all polished rocks too. Guy, it goes on forever here, the amount of minerals they got here. These ones are more gem-like. Oh, sodalite sphere, sodalite. Sodalite's pretty, yeah, there's a sodalite mine. Naturalite, corundum, feldspar, unikite, granite and epidote, marble sphere, madoc, calcite and epidote, quartz and calcite, calcite. This is some really nice specimens here. This is all, this stuff has all been found in the Bancroft area and they got geological maps here for it. Feldspar is the chief component of granite. It can be white, pink, or brown, occasionally bluish green, although found in almost all rock types. It is concentrated in the particular igneous structures called pigmatites. Since Bancroft hosts a great many pigmatites, there is therefore an abundance of feldspar, which was mined extensively from 1890s through to the 1930s. During this period, Bancroft was second only to Verona, Ontario area in the production of feldspar in Canada. Large crystals like this, one from the near Torrey Hill, are not uncommon, though most smaller crystals tend to be sharper and more attractive. Speldspar has a hardness of six on the most scale and two distinct cleavage planes meeting at approximately 90 degrees. Titanite's really cool. I want to get some titanite. Appetite. Titanite with appetite. Appetite with titanite. Hornblend. Orthoclass. Clearly Bear Lake is where you get titanite. Feldspar. Biotite. Hornblend. Orthoclass. Hornblend. Appetite. Biotite. Mica. These are all from Bear Lake, the Bear Lake diggings. West of Bancroft. See Halliburton, West Guildford, Cardiff is here too, Torrey Hill. So this is all west of Bancroft. Minden, Harcourt, Roadcut. Yeah, don't underestimate Roadcuts. Uranophane, that's where they get uranium from, Uranophane. Uraninite, that's an also another source of uranium there. Titanite, Scapolite, Microline. Uraninite, iron and manganese. Ooh, iron and manganese. I like that one. Uranite. It's really cool actually to get the uranium samples. Like, guess that's where they're getting your uranium from here. And silver crater mine, silver crater mine. So this is all silver crater mine stuff. South and southeast of Bancroft. So what is this? Oh yeah. So we just came through here. So Gilmore, Bannockburn, El Dorado, Madoc, Lamable, Caladar, Gananoque. Yeah. So this is Westport. This whole region we just came through here. Perth there? Yeah, Perth. Literally, we just drove through this entire, this entire region that we just drove through from Perth up to Bancroft. You can see we're right in the geological heart of it all here. So this would have been all the stuff we could have got at the side of the highway potentially or in places. Calcite, alanite, lots of alanite, oat barite, amazonite, sphalerite, cancronite, hematite. I really want to get some hematite. Phosphate. Mica. Oh, Galena, nice. Galena, ooh, like Galena. Fluorite. Ooh, pyrite and calcite. North and northeast of Bancroft. Madawaska, Calabogie, Berries Bay, Eganville. Ooh, sodalite. Sodalite's really pretty. Actinolite. It's minerals everywhere, guys. Mineral rock shop. Yeah, we're gonna potentially come here, but this is what sodalite looks like just out of the way that's the thing totally out of the way and then the rose quartz quarry the barrel pit discovered crystals aqua rose gems mineral quarries the barrel pit was discovered when crystals collected by locals reached the hands of provincial geologist willett g miller dr willard g miller cobalt he confirmed the deposit in 1998 feldspar quartz outcrop in the rose quarry rose quarry was mined for the feldspar in the 1920s and late 40s the bancroft area geology within 150 clicks geologic time scale so we got archean period the hadian paleoarchean mesoarchean neoarchean the oldest rocks meteorite bombardment oldest bacteria campus casing mountains age of stromatolites first complex organisms the Granville Mountains and the Mid-Continental Rift. It just keeps going up, guys. To go. Um, Paleoarchean, the oldest bacteria, and then all through Paleoarchean, Mesoarchean, Neoarchean, Paleoprotozoic, and Mesoprotozoic is Age of Stromatolites. And then we've got the Capus Casing Mountains, the Pinocchian Mountains, and the Granville Mountains, plus the Mid-Continental Rift. And that ended about 900 million years ago. 
because you have the epoch. So it's basically it goes eon, era, period, epoch, life forms, major events, and then age. This is a good chart. And then we've got the Phanerozoic eon, which is Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. Starting from the Paleozoic era, we have Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Denovian, Carboniferous, and Permian age. The age of trilobites during the Cambrian and Orcovidian era. Denovian was fish and land plants, as well as Silurian. Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian Mountains are pretty young, guys. Carboniferous, Permian age, age of amphibians. Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, Age of Dinosaurs, Ottawa and Bonacher Rift, 245 million years ago. And then the Rockies, yeah, very, very young. So Cenozoic, Tertiary period, the Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Age of Mammals, Rocky Mountains, 66 million years ago, right, to 5 million years ago. And then the Quaternary period, the Holocene, Pliocene, and Piloocene, man, continental glaciation. So the Precambrian geology, so now that we know what the Precambrian geology is and the Paleozoic geology, so two completely different periods of time that were formed completely different ways through completely different means. So granite, cyanite, gabbro, gneiss, marble conglomerate, and volcanic rock, and the color code. So granite is pinky, cyanite is orange, gabbro is like a gray, gneiss is purple, marble is blue, conglomerate's yellow, and green is volcanic. So it shows you how all the rocks come together here. And then Paleozoic geology is limestone, dolostone, shale is light blue. The dolostone bowl I was talking about with Lake Erie there, Lake Huron. We're going to be doing that too, don't worry. Sandstone. So then what do we got here? We got limestone, shale, sandstone, sandstone conglomerate, cyanite. That's cyanite, guys. Cyanite, granite, granite, gabbro, gabbro. Ooh, volcanic rock. Metamorphosized volcanic sediment. Basalt. Everybody likes basalt. Marble, marble, marble. Calcite vein dike, slate, amphibolite, nice, scarn. Oh, good old scarn, eh? Quartz, granite, conglomerate. The Bancroft Mineral Collecting Area lies in the central part of the Canadian Shield in the heart of the Grenville Province. In Canada, the Grenville Province extends northeastward from Georgian Bay and Lake Huron to the coast of Labrador, a distance of some 1,800 kilometers. The groundwall was formed about 1 billion years ago by collisions of crustal plates that resulted in the formation of an ancient supercontinent called Rodinia. A Russian from Mother Earth, Rodinia was subsequently broken apart and the pieces including the Granvillian rocks were scattered around the Earth including Scandinavia, South America and Africa. In North America during the plate collision events the Granville rocks were thrust northwestward thickening the crust and forming a mountain system that rivaled the modern Himalayas. The Granville mountains have been largely eroded away leaving only their highly deformed and metamorphosized roots behind. The Granville province consists mainly of gneisses, deformed and metamorphous igneous intrusive sedimentary and volcanic rocks. So it's huge, guys. I'm glad that the museum was open because it's really hard to kind of put into perspective geologically everything that's going on here. Alrighty, guys, so we finished up the mineral museum. It's good to know, yeah, it's really good to know what's going on here. That's gonna be it for me, guys. So if you enjoyed, like, and subscribe, and uh, make sure you hit the bell icon to get notified. Sasquatch Prospector, out.